Hey, this is Chris at Straight Out of Camera Science, and today we're going to talk about different methods for metering off-camera flash photography. The goal of metering is to give you proper exposure so that blacks look black, whites look white, and all the tones in between are in the proper place. The benefits of perfect exposure include better color, better consistency, easier editing, and usable images straight out of camera. The methods we're going to talk about are eyeballing, using an incident meter, and using a gray card in conjunction with the histogram on the back of your camera. Eyeballing images on the back of your camera, or chimping, is the most basic but also the least accurate method of determining exposure. By looking at each image, you simply make adjustments until your image looks right. There are three problems using this method. First, if you're busy looking at your camera, the chances are pretty high that you're gonna miss the next shot that's happening right in front of you. Second, the screens aren't all that accurate to begin with. And third, your eyes are easily fooled. If you're shooting in a dark room, for example, your screen is likely to be the brightest object in the room, and images that look bright and colorful on your screen will often be underexposed when you open them later. The second method for setting exposure is using an incident light meter. Your camera meter reads light that's reflected off your subject, while an incident meter is pointed towards your light to measure the light that's falling onto your subject. If you match the settings on your meter, to the settings on your camera, you should produce a proper exposure regardless of what you photograph. Dark objects will reflect less light and appear dark, and light objects will reflect more light and appear light. When using a light meter for flash, you set your camera settings first, and then match the power of your light until your light meter matches the reading for the aperture value you've selected. To show how this works, I have my model here, and I've decided to shoot at f5.6. I'm gonna hold the meter in front of them, making sure that I'm not blocking the light with my own body and fire a test shot. The meter says 6.3, so I need to reduce the power of the light and confirm that I get 5.6. Once I've matched the readings, I step back and I'm ready to shoot. And there we go, that looks pretty good. Thank you, Kendall. Meters are great tools. They're fast, convenient, and consistent, but they're also expensive. Meters also won't allow you to measure for high speed sync, and they don't take into account the differences between different lenses. As crazy as it sounds, two different lenses both set to f4 can give you different exposures due to differences in the number of glass elements, the quality of glass, and differences in magical voodoo coatings. That brings us to my favorite method, using a gray card in conjunction with the histogram on the back of your camera to determine exposure. With a little practice, gray cards are fast, consistent, more accurate, can be used for white balance, and can be purchased for as little as $10. Before we get into how to use a gray card and a histogram, we need to understand exactly what a gray card is, and what a histogram is, and what it's telling us. A gray card is calibrated to 18% reflectance, meaning that 18% of the light that hits it will be reflected back. In a perfectly exposed image, this will be middle gray, or halfway in between black and white. Contrary to popular belief, gray cards were invented as an exposure reference long before custom white balance was even a thing. In the late 1930s and early 40s, Ansel Adams and Fred Archer developed the zone system, which uses 18% as middle gray, or zone 5. Shortly after, Kodak began marketing and selling gray cards for accurate exposure, and ISO, meters, film, and digital sensors have been calibrated to this standard ever since. A histogram is a graph showing the brightness of all the pixels in your image. The graph is divided up into 256 levels, from 0 pure black on the left to 255 pure white on the right. I've made some different layers to show you exactly how your image affects the histogram. If we paint on a small black patch, you can see the corresponding pixels represented on the graph. If we increase the size of the patch, the line gets taller. Here is another patch at level 64, dark gray, and a new corresponding line at that level. Here is 128 middle gray, the same standard as the gray card. Notice that the midpoint for 128 is exactly in the middle of the graph. Here is 192 light gray and 240 almost pure white. Now that we know how individual tones are placed, let's look at some hypothetical images. 
I've used a gradient here to show an even distribution of tones throughout the image. Here is a gradient showing mostly dark tones in the image. Notice how the histogram moved to the left. And here's one showing mostly light tones, and the histogram moves over to the right. Any of these histograms could represent a properly exposed image. The change in the histogram from mostly dark tones to mostly light tones is exactly what you would see if you swapped a dark backdrop out for a light backdrop. The light hitting your subject didn't change and neither would your settings for proper exposure. Before we move to the camera, I've also added an image of a properly exposed gray card. The thicker spike from the gray card replaces the line we made at the 128 middle gray marker and again it doesn't move regardless of what we do with the background behind it. However, if we subtract one stop of exposure, everything shifts to the left, and if we overexpose by one stop, everything shifts to the right. We can now use this information with our camera's histogram to determine perfect exposure. By adjusting our settings until the histogram spike from the gray card is dead center on the graph, we know that the card will match middle gray in our final image. Anything else placed in the spot will be properly exposed. This technique works equally well with natural light as it does flash photography. Shutter speed, aperture, ISO, or flash power may all be used to move the spike left or right. Alright, so let's take a couple test shots to see how this works. I'm going to fill the frame with my gray card and take the first shot. Looking at the spike on the histogram, I see that it's too far to the left, indicating underexposure. I'm going to add two stops of power to my flash and take a second shot. Now the spike is too far to the right, indicating overexposure. I'm going to go right in between and take a third test shot to confirm. And now I see that that spike is dead center. Now with the correct exposure dialed in, I'm going to step back to include the gray card and both dresses in the shot. You can see that the blacks look black with detail, the gray card is gray, and the whites are bright white also with detail. Notice on the histogram that there's three spikes. There's a spike for the black dress, a spike for the gray card, and a spike for the white dress. Now that we've proven that the gray card works to accurately set exposure, it's time to replace the test setup with a model and do some real shooting. All right, so I am at 1 200 F8 and ISO 200. Before shooting in the studio, we need to do a test shot to make sure that we've cut out all the ambient light from our settings. To do that, you just turn the flash trigger off and take a test shot. As long as the image on the back of the screen is completely black, you're good to go. So I'm going to turn on the flash trigger. Go ahead and hold that card up and put your nose right on the target. You want to aim the gray card towards the light. Fill the frame with the card and take a test shot. Okay, so we are underexposed by quite a bit. So I'm going to add uh, two stops of power. Ken can hold the card right here. There we go. We're going to take test shot number two. Okay, so we're about a third of a stop over. All right, so the edge of that spike is right in the middle. I'm going to go into my menu and set a custom white balance. And then now that all my settings are dialed in, there's no need to look at the screen after each shot, and I can just shoot away. All right, Ken, Ken, you ready? All right, let's do a serious one. Nice face. Look here at the camera. Good. Let's do another one. Good. Let's get a silly face. What's the silliest face you can make? Perfect. Give me five. You're all done. Thank you so much. All of the images that you just saw pop up are completely straight out of camera with zero adjustments. By standardizing your workflow to proper exposure and correct white balance, you'll spend less time editing, you'll have better color, and you can even batch edit your photos with a single click preset to an entire session. I hope this video was helpful and you have a better understanding of metering for off-camera flash. Stay tuned for more videos going over basic studio lighting and on-location lighting using the methods that we've just learned.